Hey, hey everyone. So I hope everybody is back online now. So excited for this next talk from our in-house speaker, Libby Barker. Uh, she is uh, our senior project manager at Human Made and the Scrum certified project owner. Uh, she will share with you today how to use the AJAM methodology to manage projects remotely. And it's been interesting because many people in different talks have been talking about Agile, about Scrum, about weekly reviews, daily stand-ups. So she's going to tell you everything about it so you can understand better what Agile is. So it's going to be very valuable with the rest of the content we had before. So I'm going to go ahead and bring Libby to the screen. So we're here and unmute you. Hey. Hi. Thanks, Daphne. Uh, yes, it's been very exciting hearing everyone talking about Agile today. Um, I've heard it in a couple of different sessions. Um, as Daphne mentioned, I am a senior project manager at Human Made and I'm a, a Scrum certified product owner. So Agile is something that is uh, very close to my heart, something that I'm very passionate about and um, enjoy sharing with the Human Made team. And uh, I'm looking forward to talking to you about today. So, um, to be honest, actually, when Anna and Daphne first approached me with regard to presenting a session on Agile methodology for remote teams, I was a bit overwhelmed because um, Agile is a, a big topic and it can be tackled from many different angles. <clears throat> in, in many cases, it has as much to do with uh, emotional and behavioral intelligence as it does with project delivery. It's all about um, understanding your team and your clients' needs and, and finding ways to better, better address them in, in each workflow. So in many cases, it's often easiest to talk about the logistics of Agile. So which tools we use and how Scrum roles might map to traditional project team roles. But I often find that these conversations can distract from the philosophy is that these logistics exist to serve. So in thinking about how to prepare the session, um, I ultimately landed on, <laughs> excuse me, <clears throat> a central theme that I felt would be particularly relevant to an audience of remote workers. So that um, the central uh, goal for today will be to look at how Agile methodologies can really be effective in, in helping our remote teams to communicate um, asynchronously and across cultures. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so as I'm sure we have all experienced and it's very easy to agree on, effective communication is the foundation of any successful business relationship. And as some of the other speakers have discussed today, um, communicating effectively for remote teams is absolutely paramount. So whether you are a remote employee working as part of a larger organization, as some of us are, or an individual who is pursuing the life of a digital nomad, the goal of working remotely is the ability to grow professionally regardless of location. <clears throat> However, that goal brings with it some challenges when it comes to communication. And three, of, I would like to address three of these today. The first is communicating across time zones. Uh, regardless of the size of our organizations, as we acquire new clients and partnerships, we never really find ourselves in a position where we will need to address how we manage asynchronous communication to the benefit of our teams and our clients. The second is communicating across cultures. Similar to the benefit of working asynchronously, one of the benefits of working remotely is that we're not bound by location. We can uh, and do develop working relationships across nationalities, cultures, religions, and languages. <clears throat> These relationships can spark dynamic, innovative work that's only possible um, when you're able to draw together teams from these very different backgrounds, but it can also raise challenges around the way that we communicate with each other. Creating frameworks for organizational empathy feedback loops and iteration are really essential to sustaining a truly distributed and inclusive workplace. 
The third challenge I'll address is one that I uh, contend with on a daily basis in my work with clients. And that is the way we as a distributed team communicate accountability and transparency to partners who are co-located. While we have embraced working remotely, uh, growing a successful remote business uh, requires that we're able to effectively work with partners and clients that haven't. While they understand the benefits of working with distributed teams, some of which I've already mentioned, um, they often contend with, um, you know, traditional workplace philosophies and practices that rely on an understanding of things like physical presence or the observation of a nine to five business day as evidence of accountability. So obviously this can lead to uh, misunderstanding or anxiety when they're working with remote teams. At HumanMade, um, these are certainly challenges we face every day. Uh, our entire team is distributed over five continents. Um, collectively, we speak 12 languages, and our project teams are assembled to suit project need. So they're location agnostic. That being said, all of our clients are co-located. <clears throat> so what does this have to do with the session on agile project management, you may be asking yourself. Um, most of you may already be familiar with elements of Agile in some respect. Um, the terminologies and tools are pretty ubiquitous in the tech world, whether you're working in an agency or in product or it, in any industry, it's becoming very popular in, in many different fields now. You may know you have your milestones and sprints, uh, epics and user stories, or Kanban boards with Trello and Jira. <laughs> Sorry. But at the end of the day, these all serve to exist one purpose, which is sustainable and rigorous communication. So for those of you who are new to Agile, um, the term may be somewhat nebulous. It can refer to a few different things. But in its most basic definition, it is an umbrella term that refers to a number of uh, iter iterative project delivery methodologies, including Scrum, Kanban, Scrum Ban, <laughs> Lean Software, Extreme Programming, the list goes on. Um, but in 2001, representatives from these different methodologies came together to find a common ground between the different workflows they had established. The end result was the Agile Manifesto, which is this document right here. It is individuals and interactions over processes and tools, working software over comprehensive documentation, customer, customer collaboration over contract negotiation, and responding to change over following a plan. So pretty short, doc, short document, it's only 24 words long. So reading through, it's easy to notice an emphasis on Phrases like individual, interaction, collaboration, response, in short, communication, and the way teams communicate with stakeholders, regardless of sector. Now, this is important for remote teams because we can really leverage this focus on communication to address some of those challenges we looked at at the top of the session. So let's start breaking this down in terms of some of the Agile terms we may be familiar with. As some of you may know, uh, the foundation of an Agile development workflow is the sprint. These are between one and four weeks, and the express goal of each is to deliver a piece of working software at its conclusion. However, um, their purpose has much deeper implications for Agile teams. Um, other than just outlining a, a delivery timeline, they also serve as a scaffolding for a consistent and rigorous conversation. The first of these is the sprint planning meeting. These meetings, uh, ideally, when time zones allow, should include the entire development team and the client in, in the process of identifying what work will be delivered during a sprint. <clears throat> these serve as a critical time for distributed teams and, oh, sorry, <laughs> for distributed teams, um, as it's an opportunity for everyone to join together at the same time for one purpose. Um, you are able to, it's a time to knowledge share, 
uh, to identify a strategy for the remainder of the sprint and to ensure that everyone is on the same page. Um, the benefit is that during this time, you're able to establish a core shared understanding of project, project strategy, and it creates an environment in which all team members have uh, ownership uh, and understanding of their teammates' plans. Um, when you are working across time zones, this is particularly beneficial as this shared knowledge makes it much easier for team members to uh, pick up tasks uh, regardless of where they are when they're able to log on to a project. As I'm sure you can imagine, this can have uh, an exponential impact on the efficiency of the way you're delivering work. This level of engagement um, extends beyond the project team to clients and partners as well. Sprint planning provides a time for our partners to express their organization's needs. Because of the short iterative nature of sprints, it's far easier for project teams to pivot to meet changing requirements and to consistently deliver a product of value. The benefit here is that we're always fine tuning our understanding of a project's true goals and the ultimate return on investment it will have for the stakeholder. Running a sprint planning session remotely may seem to be a bit daunting uh, at first. Uh, coordinating times uh, that will work for the bulk of your team is often the most difficult hurdle and can take a bit of finessing in order to, to find the best time and method. However, once you have achieved, you've achieved this first step, any conference call platform uh, will, that will allow you to share a screen um, is a great, simple way to run a sprint planning meeting. Um, as an example, I have here just a, a screenshot of a sprint planning meeting I've been running for uh, one of our projects. As you can see on the, um, on the right here is our uh, list of avatars, and, and we are on the Zoom call reviewing together our Kanban board um, that's been compiled on GitHub projects. So during this time, we review projects that are in, I'm sorry, issues that are in progress and identifying um, issues from the product backlog here, uh, where my cursor is, um, to be nominated um, into development in the sprint backlog. Daily standups are another of the kind of core communications tools of a sprint. Um, in their most basic form, standup is a daily progress update that asks three basic questions. What were your accomplishments yesterday? What are your tasks for today? Are there blockers pre preventing you from accomplishing this work? As you can probably tell from the name, standups were originally designed to happen in real time and to be short enough that they could be accomplished while everyone is standing. So no more than 15 minutes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Obviously, this is not really possible for remote teams. Um, there are a number of apps and tools that allow for asynchronous daily standups, however. And these are important because they allow us to to continue to run these uh, regardless of location. And it really is a great tool um, for teams uh, working with Agile, it's pretty critical. Um, so there are many benefits to the stand up from creating greater transparency around work in progress for both project teams and clients um, and to addressing questions um, that might affect the rest of the sprint. Um, being able to address these on a daily basis as opposed to waiting one, two, or four weeks for the next sprint planning meeting uh, improves our ability to deliver more efficiently. However, um, beyond just the logistics of the stand-up, there are um, also a great window of insight into our team's well-being, and we can use information collected here to identify pain points um, and misunderstandings before they lead to feelings of alienation or disengagement. As an example, um, I have a screenshot here of an asynchronous standup we're running using uh, geekbot.io, which is a great tool. Uh, each day at 9 a.m. local time, Geekbot will message the team with prompts to describe their work from yesterday, today, and, and any questions. Um, for May 25th, luckily there are no blockers. Um, and you'll notice how easy it is to quickly scan through each message 
and find what each team member has planned for the day. And, and if there were any blockers, um, how this very straightforward message about it would allow us to address it really quickly. Um, it's also a good way to quickly ask, assess mood for the team. Uh, for example, this message here uh, from my coworkers notes uh, some good progress finally, suggesting recent feelings of frustration. And this would sig signal to me that I should check in with them to see how they're feeling um, and to also celebrate their success with them as they seem to have overcome something that was a challenge. So just as Agile allows us to more quickly respond to external change, it also allows us a structured way to look inward and adapt our workflows based on feedback from our teams and partners. Uh, retrospectives most often occur at the end of a sprint and are most effective when they're executed consistently. So if you are planning to run retrospectives, um, you should run them at the end of every sprint in order to assess how how much change you're able to affect based on this feedback. There are many strategies for how to run a retrospective, and depending on your approach, um, there are ways to run these asynchronously. For example, one very straightforward method that I like is called um, good, bad, better, and best. Uh, good, bad, better, and best uh, asks uh, team members to share their feedback uh, for a project or a sprint in all of those categories. So good are things that went well, uh, better are things that could be improved on, bad are, in this case, my team members change <laughs> to opportunity uh, as an opportunity for improvement, and best, uh, meaning this could not be improved anymore, it's perfect. In this instance, for this project, uh, we created a, a table using Google Docs and the team members added their feedback asynchronously. Ideally, uh, you, it's best to try to um, find a time to connect after this uh, table has been completed by the team to review and identify strategies uh, for improvement where possible. Um, if not, as a project manager, you can collate this information and distribute it back to the team for further discussion. The most important thing, though, um, that I, I would suggest to keep in mind uh, when, running a when running a retrospective is that it's a time for teams and clients to, to truly be honest with each other. Um, they're not a time for managers to request updates or to direct conversation. Uh, rather, the, for all parties, it's an important space that encourages teams to exercise ownership over a project. So, for example, um, if there are opportunities for improvement in, say, uh, using third-party code for design, um, it's, it's up to the Agile team, the developers, to determine what the next best step is uh, to imp improve the workflow for them. Documentation is central to every project. And for remote teams, it can make or break one's experience. Um, I want to revisit the Agile manifesto quickly as documentation is called out specifically um, to say working software over comprehensive documentation. On an initial read, this would, excuse me, this would su suggest that in an Agile uh, environment, documentation is not valued as highly as it might be in a traditional uh, project management environment. Um, that was certainly my first read of it when I was training in Agile. Um, to clarify, the statement refers specifically to the practice of composing technical documentation prior to development. And the danger here uh, seems pretty obvious, which is that um, this type of uh, process could unfairly inhibit or place restrictions on the development team that hasn't had a chance to fully identify best practice approaches to a project um, before the expectations for how it will be delivered are already set. Um, however, building out clear and copious documentation as the project progresses 
is a really important part of any project and is a great way for remote teams to address some of the challenges we faced earlier. It's a great practice to identify a single location where all of your documents for the project will live. Uh, we tend to use GitHub Wiki, um, but Google Docs or Dropbox Paper are great tools as well. Um, this is a, a fantastic place to include information about um, workflow processes, onboarding processes, technical do document, sorry, documentation around technical decisions. And also, uh, I find very helpful to include notes from phone calls. Um, there are many opportunities for miscommunication, regardless of the tools we're using. So even if we have Google Hangouts or Zoom, there's always the possibility that a call will be dropped, the video is not working, and all of these uh, impact uh, our understanding of, of a conversation. Uh, keeping meeting notes um, and sharing them with the team immediately after the meeting is a great way to, um, you know, ensure that in retrospect everyone is on the same page before fully diving into the next period of work. So, as I said, mentioned at the beginning of the session, Agile is a, a very big topic to tackle. Um, and there are many avenues uh, for exploration in this workflow methodology. Um, however, from a high level, uh, the takeaway I would hope that uh, you have from, from this session is just the benefits that the practices embedded in uh, Agile methodology uh, have for improving communication um, for remote teams and for the, um, the clients that we're working with. So with that, uh, Daphne, I'm going to tap you. <laughs> I'm back. Hey, thank you, Libby. It was really great, really interesting um, to hear you talk about Agile and how we do it human made. Um, I'm just going to get some water. Um, so we can start talking. Um, I have some questions from the audience. Um, okay. So people, people are like, thanks, Libby. Thanks, Libby, in the chat. <laughs> thanks, everyone. Uh, so let's go ahead. So I think we have a good time. We have about uh, 15 minutes to go through a lot of questions, so we'll try to do as much as we can. Um, the first question I have here is from uh, Alina, and her question is, hi, Libby. What are the best project management tools you have found for agile management, and what are the pros and cons for each tool? So thanks, Elena. Um, I tend to prefer uh, tools that are on the more basic side of the spectrum. Um, there are a lot of options out See, oh, I think she's a, she's a little disconnect. It won't be long, just gonna try to bring her back in. There might be a little issue here. Just one moment, I bring her back here. Won't be long. Here we go. She just has to be uh, tuned back in, so we'll just take a second. Won't be long. Sorry for, for waiting, everyone. It's very interesting, though, to um, hear a little bit more about what Agile is, because for many of us, if we don't necessarily work with Agile, we don't necessarily know like, what it is. So I was glad to have a session that could really explain in detail how Agile is working for people who don't necessarily do project management. Oh, Libby is still chatting there. I think um, maybe someone can tell her. I mean, I still added her to the session. It just seems to be having a little technical problem right now. I'll try again.
So, seems to be having a little lag here. I'm gonna try a, I'm not sure what would be the best thing to do now. Just gonna flip with the team. So anywho, um, if it's not working right now to bring Libby on, the good thing is that right now, just after Libby's session, we're doing a human-made uh, AMA. So we're going to be able to ask uh, many, many questions to Libby, but also to many different people from human-made. So if we're not able to bring Libby back, you'll be able to, and to ask all of your questions there. So um, just one minute, I just want to see um, if we're able to have a last, maybe last chance to get Libby back and then uh, we'll see if we can uh, come back in. So I'm going to try this here. She's kind of showing as uh, accepted and connecting, but it seems like the software is not bringing her in properly right now. I tell her to reload the page and be um, maybe a little issue there. The plus side is that we're not losing any time for the Q&A because we had extra time. So we're not losing. Oh, she's back. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no worries. I was worried. Yay, everybody's happy. <laughs> Winning. We had to have one technical issue, right? We needed with just one. All right. All right. Let's go ahead. That's all right. Yeah, we're so I'm happy, happy to take them for the team. <laughs> Let's go. Okay, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's, we still have like a good like a 12 to 13 minutes to answer questions. But I really know where. Okay. I know it was a little short. Um, so let's so continue the question here um, about the tool. Elena's question. Project management right. tool that you use for agile management. Right. So um, at the moment, my favorite is uh, GitHub boards. Um, we, every, all of our work is managed in GitHub. So it's a really seamless way to translate all of that into um, an agile framework. Um, they have the common boards. Um, they've recently released dependencies feature. <clears throat> Um, you can estimate there and uh, you get reports on on burn down if you are, are using that. Um, I find Trello is a little um, a little too too basic and something like Jira is a little too complicated. Um, so since we do work so much in GitHub, anything that um, is an extension of, of GitHub is, is best for us. Good. Um, another question from Benjamin is um, remote agile seems to break one of the principles of the agile manifesto, which is the most efficient and effective method of conveying information to and within the development team is face to face conversation. What do you think about this? Um, well, I think that as remote teams. Um, well, Layla actually mentioned this in her session too, like always trying to find ways to work face to face, regardless of uh, being in a remote team and to reconstruct that experience, even if you're not co-located. Co um, so for, for me, I'll, uh, you know, I tend to, whenever possible, speak with my team members face to face, um, whether it's on a Slack call or Zoom, um, there, I think, are conversations, and we all realize when they've reached a point where they're not happening productively by text anymore, that is always when you suggest doing a phone call. Um, so it's, it's a balance of trying to have both of those things, but um, particularly with clients, too, face-to-face -to -face is your first line of defense. All right. Cool. Um, next question from Kira. Uh, what is the best way to break into remote PM 
having a bit of leadership and management experience, but how should one approach a potential employer? So maybe somebody who's trying to get into project management, if I understand, or as a remote PM. So uh, what do you think? So I, I mean, I kind of fell into project management a little bit accidentally from um, working in television production, um, although there is a lot of overlap. I think that if you already have uh, leadership and management experience, you're well on your way. Um, the goal is to just find the remote team or the type of remote team that you would like to work for and to pursue that. Uh, when I I had been working as a, a project management at a WordPress agency for about a year and a half. Uh, that agency was co-located and um, about two years into that I, I felt I wanted to grow in our market. Um, I'm in Vermont, it's very small. So I decided that the way to to grow professionally was to look for remote work uh, and I identified a number of agencies after a lot of research um, that I felt would be a good fit for me and I just and pursued it 100% <laughs> and we found you <laughs> <laughs> definitely <laughs> personally <laughs> found me <laughs> I was just but uh, human made was uh, your choice there um human yeah human made is my top choice <laughs> um good awesome so i think it's interesting because in the end there's many um kind of stories like that people say that they just learned their way and then went into project management i think one more thing i could add is also that you went to get a certification as well so yeah um i have been introduced to agile by a colleague of mine who's a developer um he was the lead developer at my previous agency and um we spoke a lot about it and um was intrigued based on our conversations there I spent a lot of re time researching it on my own um but ultimately being able to get the certification um the certification is a certification but the experience of having the hands-on workshop um was most important uh, right. really forces you to dive in and, and experiment with all of those things and try instead of trying to build them in piecemeal which can be very difficult good cool um so uh, another question and uh, now um there is one from andre saying how about the sprint review um i call reviews retrospective so um that's what i would consider a sprint review um, and that was when we looked at good, bad, better, and best, um, you know, uh, what could be done mm. better, um, how to fine tune workflow based on that feedback, um, obviously looking at the amount of tasks we were able to accomplish in that week, but, um, that might be a, a difference in terminology. Right. Right. Um, another question now. Um, I feel like the light is going down on me and it's going darker and darker in here. <laughs> I have to turn, up, to turn on the light very soon. Um, so uh, another question. Um, it's been very hard to uh, live up to individuals over interactions, over processes and tools in a virtual team. So since tools are so useful, how do you prevent too many tools getting on your way instead of helping you? I like to avoid too much bookkeeping or being too nosy. Uh, which processes need tool support and which don't? Um, this, I think, ties into um, the first question about tools, too. Um, as I said, uh, or as part of my response for that, um, that I like more basic tools. Um, or I prefer more basic tools um, because it allows you to kind of build up where necessary. Um, so I guess my answer would be one, yes, choose a tool and make it a canvas so you can use it to support you as your workflow evolves over the project. Um, in terms of on a communication level, um, just keep asking for feedback about how to improve things and your clients will definitely not be <laughs> shy about sharing it. <laughs> um, but both from clients and from your team, um, you know, is this working for you? And, and if not, how can we dial it back or how can we build it up so that it's more supportive? Um, yes, on a virtual team tools are like, it's impossible to to not rely on them. Um, 
but just being cognizant of of that again balance that role that they're playing in the project and um you know as a project manager um or a developer you know as a team you you get to understand or feel when something is becoming too cumbersome um but i guess you know the sooner you can identify that as a burden and then try to address it is uh, is the most important thing you can do yeah and then start starting to optimize and see do we really need that do we really need this <laughs> etc um, okay, great. So I have time for one more question and uh, we might be able to do the last one. Um, how are you managing planning poker and how do you handle estimation across teams? I don't know if this poker thing. Maybe it's poker? <laughs> poker. Um, I'm currently not doing this a ton on any of my projects, so I can't speak to it specifically. Um, yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> No worries. No worries. Um, so I think I'm going to answer the other question then. Um, the question, question is, what is the Kanban board service? Or people, somebody is like confused about the Kanban thing. Oh, uh, Kanban board is just um, a board that lists your, or identifies the cues for how you're thinking about work. So um, from my slides, for example, there was one that had um, uh, product backlog, sprint backlog, in progress, UAT, etc. Um, and you can, it, it's slightly different for each, um, what's the word I'm Different thinking? project? Like practice, like mm -hmm. it might be slightly different for Kanban and Scrum, but it's, it's the, um, it's like the board Trello. where you move across issues. So Trello, it's, it's just like a flexible board where tasks are uh, visual modular pieces that you can move visually through mm -hmm. the workflow to provide greater transparency over uh, where they are in terms of work being completed. Cool. Good. I think we got all the way through all the questions. Yay. I'm really very proud of this. <laughs> we were able to get to all the questions. <laughs> So, um, I mean, I mean, this is basically done for, um, for us on Agile for remote teams. And thank you so much, Lee, for coming over and talking to us about how you work also, you know, because I know it's really of course. work. So it's really nice to hear from you. Um, so while you're here, actually, I'm just going to hide you now and say goodbye to you. And then I'm going to talk about the next session. Uh, so thank you so much, Lee, and uh, I hope you had a good time. We really had, liked your session as well. Bye. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and change that session. Um, right now, I'm actually going to talk to you just quickly that the next session is going to be our uh, AMA, so basically our AHMA. So you'll get to ask us anything you want about remote work, about human made, about how we do things, many different things. It's going to be very silly as well. Um, you can ask us in the next session. It's going to be 30 minutes, and I'm going to go back and uh, log into the next session to invite you all there. It's going to be a written session only. So um, I'm going to go back, go ahead now and switch session and invite you all there. And we can start having the AMA just there. Stay tuned.